Good morning, good morning. Today is February 1st, 2022. And I'm just going to wait for a few people to join. Pray that everybody is doing well on this morning, on this beautiful uh, Tuesday morning. It's pretty uh, beautiful outside. It's not too cold. It's not too hot. It's I can deal with the temperature. It's not freezing. I can deal with that. So I'm just going to uh, chit-chat a bit. I'm, I'm going to wait for a, a few people to join, and then I'm going to get into today's message and go right ahead and get started. Good morning, sis. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Okay. I thank God for waking us up on today. And I just thank him for his grace and his mercy for allowing us to see a new day. And I just thank God for the air in my lungs and the breath of my body. Uh, God is the giver of life and, and um, you know, things may not be going our way. And but we still just gonna trust God and just you know be grateful because there's so many people that didn't wake up on today. There's so many people that's dying from COVID every day. There's so many people that's just dying at the hands of senseless gun violence and uh sickness and disease and just all kind of things that uh the, the devil is cooking up and plotting up with sickness and disease and gun violence and just just everything he's so busy he running rampant but um uh i'm just praying you know that, that god give us give us all strength and a, and a peace that surpasses our understanding so um Again, I'm going to wait uh, for a couple people to hop on. Once again, today is February 1st, uh, 2022. Today is Tuesday, if I'm not mistaken. And um, for those of you who come in late, just go back and watch the replay. So the father placed on my heart um, maybe about a month or so ago to do a series for Black History Month. And that's what I'm gonna do. I had com I contemplated uh, doing the series the like the whole month or or so because it may have been more than a month. I'm not sure. I contemplated back and forth on whether I was gonna do it or not. I you know I wondered to myself, is this a God given idea or is this something that I want to do? You know what I'm saying? But of course, the enemy tries to plant seeds of doubt and make me feel like. Uh, you know, it wasn't a good idea or it wasn't a creative idea or I wasn't going to have the views or the support or whatever, but the devil just a liar. So it doesn't matter, you know, because people will be blessed by this series. Uh, I'm being obedient. God placed it on my heart to do it and I'm going to, uh, teach it to the best of my ability. So, um, I'm going to get started in like one more minute. So the reason why I wanted to do this series is because uh, for so long uh, concerning black people, uh, I say the European race, okay, people who uh, have, you know, white skin, they have suppressed the truth for so long, okay, and, and, and why would they do that is to keep us oppressed, right, and so there is a great awakening that's going on in these last days and and like the bible said that in the last days god will pour out his spirit on all flesh and we would uh have dreams and visions and we will prophesy but he said that knowledge would increase in the last days and that's what's happening there there is an awakening that's going on especially you know in the black community but there are a lot of people that are still asleep Unfortunately, there is a, you know, there's a strong delusion. There is um, a, a spirit of, of slumber, if you will. And so what I have come to do on today and for every day for the rest of this month is to, to bring you truth. Okay, which is that's why this is the name of my podcast, Pro Truth and Provoking Thoughts. So I just want to provoke your thought. 
um, and I stand for truth. Hence the uh, the title "Pro Truth and Provoking Thought." I stand for truth, and um, and I want to provoke your thought. I also want to encourage you to uh to study for yourself. Okay, don't just take um the teachings that I bring to you and just listen to me, but actually follow along if you can, and also um you know do your own research that's what i want to encourage you to do but a lot of what i'm what i'm going to be sharing with you during this 28 day series a lot of it is right in the bible all you have to do is pick it up get it off the coffee table crack it open and actually study it for yourself and the lord will reveal things to you matter of fact what I like to do is I like to share scripture that's undeniable, okay? Undeniable evidence. So nobody can, you know, um, object to what I'm saying because I like to teach, you know, scripture that pretty much speak for itself. It's cut and dry. You ain't got to read in between the lines of any of that because the Bible tells us to study uh, line upon line, precept upon precept. So you got to study line by line the bible okay and so um the reason why i wanted to do this this series is because you know i always wondered when i was in school when i was in middle school when i was in high school i used to wonder like how did black people get here and i understand okay the atlantic slave trade yeah that's how we got here but I wanted to know, okay, but how did I get here? How did my family get here? How did we get here? But there are still, okay, black people or other Africans in Africa to this day. So I wonder, you know, it was so many questions that ran through my mind. I wanted to know um, why was I learning more about um of white people history than my own history i wanted to know why do we not have uh why we didn't have a black curriculum as far as uh, a black uh history actual class or curriculum you know these were the types of questions that were, were racing through my mind as a uh as a preteen a teenager and even as a young adult and so it was after i got saved is when um god began revealing things to me and the spirit of truth began to um lead me and guide me in all truth just like the bible said that he would he's uh the bible says that when the spirit of truth come he will lead you and guide you into all truth and the holy spirit does just that and so what i would do because i've always loved history i have always um just had a love for black history my uh one of my favorite uh female uh role models was harriet tubman and for some reason i was always drawn to her in in her assignment you know and and i just was kind of obsessed with her and i, I don't want to say use the word obsessed but i just admire her strength and her her bravery and her courage and you know i used to wonder like wow how she didn't get caught you know what i'm saying it was just so fascinating and so amazing to me and so i just always you know wanted to learn more and know more about slavery while we was enslaved in the in the first place and you know what type of god would allow us to to be enslaved why did he allow us to be enslaved what did we do to be enslaved and also you know why we hated and feared so much and so after i got saved that's when god began to reveal things to me and i began connecting the dots for myself and so um that comes with being in the presence of god and just studying okay so today um it's the first day of the series i just wanted to get that out the way i also want to say this by no means am i racist at all i love all people but just because i stand for the truth does not make me a racist okay you know white people uh not just white people chinese people uh russians africans they stand for their truth all the time but for some reason when we as black people you know like to to tell the truth we racist or why you just can't leave that alone or why you can't leave that in the past well because okay if you don't know your history or where you come from then that's the result of of, of what you see today okay our identity and our history was stripped from us so that's why we in the position that we in today because just being honest, most of the people who look like me or who are uh, referred to as African-Americans or Negroes or whatever, they think they know God, but they really don't. 
And so my goal is to, to teach you about who the real God is, the real God of the Bible, uh, the one with the, uh, the bronze skins, the woolly hair, his son. And I want to teach you about a people, a royal priesthood of people who, who happen to have been enslaved. And, and we are Hebrew. We are descendants of those people. And everything, every day that I give you or that I share with you in each day of the series, each, each day is going to be, um, something different. Okay. I'm going to be led and I'm going to teach it to the best of my ability. But, um, like I said, you can follow along with me or when you get a chance, you can go Go back and watch the replay but please feel free to comment to share to engage or to inbox me and let, let me know what you, what you think about what i'm doing about what i'm sharing if the information blessed you or whatever but like i said don't just take my word for it actually follow along in the scripture look it up when you get a chance for yourself and go from there so now that I got that out the way, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Today is day one of the 28 uh, day series in honor of Black History Month. I have some props because when I teach, I like to make it interesting. I don't like it to be boring because what I want to do is intrigue your mind. I want to intrigue you. I want to provoke your thought. Okay. And, um, and, and that's what I'm going to try my best to do. So today is uh, video one, day one of the 28-day series, and today's title is called The Image, okay? The Image, and I'm not sure if I'm going to change that title, but for right now, that's what it's called, The Image, okay? And so I'm going to explain all of that, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. Please, if you come in late, please feel free to go back and watch the replay. So... <clears throat> I just want to say this, okay? <laughs> I went out of my way to go and buy this candle this morning because uh, I had to um, get up early and get out and go do something. And I'm so passionate about my assignment and so passionate about teaching the Word of God. And I'm so passionate and so excited to do this teaching that I went and bought this candle, okay? out of family dollars just so i can have some props okay so this is the image that i'm talking about okay this is a false image this is a false image of the messiah okay this contradicts the bible and i'm going to explain to you why this image is so significant and i'm also going to explain to you why this image is a bald face lie okay like i said i'm not racist but everything that i bring to your attention is gonna be scripture scriptural the bible is going to back it up but i got this prop because when i teach sometimes um i do like to um i do like to have props so that uh you can have Im imagery and to just you know make it fun and exciting so that's the title of today's message it's called the image i may change it i don't know but like I said, this 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 is false. This contradicts the Bible. Okay, it, it this is not this is not the real Messiah. Okay, so now that that's my first prop for today. Okay, this man right here, that's not the true Messiah. Okay, <laughs> that's not him. He 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 don't look like that. But I'm gonna explain all of that. So. Um, I just thought that that would be a fun, um, you know, when, when I, I, I feel like God has graced me with an unusual and in, in, uh, in a unique, in a unique anointing to, um, to teach and preach, to make it, um, fun and interesting and make it intriguing so that I can, you know, capture my audience attention. But, you know, I don't want you to be focused on me. I want you to focus on what I'm preaching and, and teaching you. And I want you to look up what I'm what I'm telling you for yourself. You know, don't take my word for it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to make this as fun and interesting, but informative as possible. That's my goal for this series. So the image is uh, day one. That's the name of today's title. So y'all know I'm always going to give you scripture. So like I said, if you can follow along or whatever at your leisure, whatever, or put your listening ears on. So this is this series is in honor of Black History Month, the real Black History Month. Okay, 
So Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Then God said, let us make a man in our image after our likeness. Okay. That comes from Genesis 1 verse 26. Okay. The definition of image. The definition of image is a representation of the external form of a person or a thing in art. Okay. A representation of the external form of a person or thing in art. Okay. The definition of a likeness. Okay. Likeness. The fact or quality of being a like uh, resemblance. Okay. So the reason why I wanted to give you that is because I'm going somewhere with that. Okay. So hold that thought. Because I'm probably going to come back to that. Now, Revelation. Okay. I'm going somewhere now. Uh, uh, follow me now. Re Revelation chapter 1 verses 14 through 15. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Okay, now when I first got on here, right. Remember, I told you I went out my way this morning to go to Family Dollar and get this image. Now, I'm in Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. Does this look like the man who has white hair of wool, okay, eyes of flaming fire, and Feet unto fine brass as if they burn in a furnace. And does it look like his voice sounds like uh, many waters? I want you to be the judge. That's why I said this image is a lie. Now, looks to me like this man right here, you know, I see different dep depictions of Jesus. And for the most part, the depictions, he usually have blonde hair blue eyes and white skin so i ain't got to prove to you nothing according to the bible this this is a lie so this depiction is debunked okay debunk it's a lie but the reason why i'm showing you this image is because i'm going somewhere with this okay i'm going somewhere with this now Revelation chapter 4 and 2. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a, and a sardine stone. Now, I don't have a jasper or a sardine stone. But when I looked up those stones, because all you got to do is just type them in on the internet, just put in images of jasper stone and image of a sardine stone. They're crystals. And the best thing I can do for you right now, because I don't have a prop for those, is to just give you the description of the colors that I saw. And the colors that I saw was like a... Um, kind of like a brownish, like a reddish brown. So that first de uh, description that I gave you, I believe that was the description of the father, okay? The one where I said he had hair of wool and his eyes were um, as flame and fire. I believe that was the description of God. But, but this description right here in Revelation 4 and 2, uh, where it said that, behold, I saw him sitting on the throne, I think that that is the description of the sun, okay, where it says that um, he, he, uh, his, they described him as having skin of jasper in a sardine stone. So what I want you to do is when you get a chance, Google jasper in a sardine stone 
and then that way you will have an image of what of what those colors look like and like i said the jasper in the sardine stone was like was like a reddish like a deep uh reddish dark brownish color okay Imagery is very important in this message, so follow along with me. If you come in late, just go back and watch it from the beginning because in these 28 days, I'm going to, uh, this is the foundation of, of the 28 day series. So every day when I uh, do a video, I'm going to build on it each day. So good morning, sis. I'm so glad that you are on. How are you? Thank you for joining. Go back and watch from the beginning if you came in late. So, yes, in your own time, look up uh, Jasper and Sardine Stones, and you will see the colors of uh, those stones. Now, also remember when I was in Revelation uh, chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, it said that the Father had feet of brass, okay, as if they had been burned in a furnace. So I want you to look up the color of brass, jasper stone, and sardine stone. And again, this man right here, he don't look like his feet was burned in a furnace. And he don't look like he got feet of brass, uh, hair of wool, or flaming eyes of fire, okay? So we already debunked this. I didn't debunk it, but the Bible debunked it, okay? So that is a false image. Also, the Bible tells us not to make any images in any likeness of anything in heaven or uh, under the earth. Okay, they go for angels, uh, the son, the father. That's idolatry. We're not supposed to make any type of images because nobody has actually seen God in person. Okay, so, but moving right along. Okay, so metaphor. What is what is the definition of a metaphor? So, metaphor is a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to an object or action to which it is not literally applicable. Now, remember in Revelation 1, verses 14 through, through 15, it said that his head and his hairs were white like wool. So, that's a metaphor. So, a metaphor to me is like saying, basically... It is kind of um what do I want to say? It's kind of comparing. It's it's like it's comparing his hair to be like wool because if if it wasn't, then I don't feel like it would have gave the description of wool. Now here's what where people can say: Well, it didn't say his hair was like wool. It said that his hair was white like wool. But again. That's a metaphor because a metaphor is is using something to to um is is what I just said uh, a figure of speech yes a figure of speech in which a word or phrase is applied to an object or action to which it is not literally applicable a thing regarded as representative or symbolic of of something else especially something abstract okay so god is abstract we can't see him but from the description in revelation 1 and 14 through 15 we have a pretty good idea that uh this man right here is an imposter now like i said to you i'm not racist at all but you got to keep in mind i'm pro-truth and provoking thought so i'm going somewhere with this that's why I titled this first video the image because I'm going somewhere with this. I want you to have an image of this picture and I'm going to use some more props, okay? Because I'm, I'm hang on with me. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this teaching. Now, Genesis 2 and 7. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Okay, that comes from Genesis two and seven. Now, 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 follow along. Now, keep up because I'm going somewhere with this. So, Genesis three and nineteen says, "By the sweat, God is talking to Adam. By the sweat of your face, you will eat bread until you return to the ground, because out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you will return." Now. Let me back up a little bit. 
Now, remember the first scripture that I gave you in this video said that Genesis 1 26 said, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then I gave you the definition of image and I gave you the definition of likeness. Now, check this out. If Adam and Eve was made in the image of God, then how could they have been white? Genesis 2 and 7 just said the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed his nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living being. So if Adam and Eve was formed from dust and God took uh, the dirt and, and formed man in, in woman, then how could they be white? Right, so that's pretty much debunked. We can pretty much conclude that Adam and Eve could not have been uh white people because number one, it said that they was made in the likeness in the image of God, which I already gave you with the description of the Bible said that his like his description was okay, feet of burnished feet of burnished brass. Uh, eyes of flame and fire and white hair like wool. So if they was made in his image, they can be white, right? So dust. What color is dust? Dust is with like gray. So I got another demonstration. Demonstration. So take this cup. I'm I'm being as creative as possible. I'm gonna have to put the mic down for a second. Now use your imagination. I was laying in bed last night thinking about this series and thinking about this video. And the Lord gave me this demonstration. Now, if you can see, this is a cup of milk, okay? It's white. Now, this is Adam, okay? This is Adam. This is a cup of milk. I hope you can see. Okay? This is Adam. What I just, I just gave you the definition of a metaphor, right? So, we're going to use our creativity. This is Eve. Okay, this is the second cup. God created Adam and God created Eve. Well, this is what they teach us. Okay, this is false. Okay, we know this to be false because if, if Adam was white and if Eve was white, then... White and white, when you put white and white together, you can't get nothing but white. In other words, you can't get black out of this. Now, the Bible already told us that when he created them, he created them from the dust of the ground. So, this don't look like dust to me. So, basically, no matter what you do, a white man and a white woman can only produce white. So if that be the case, then where did all these other races of people come from? Where did black people come from? Did we just fall out the sky? Poof, poof, be gone, and then we just appeared? Now I'm going to say this. This wasn't part of my notes. But... A black man and a black woman, I want you to put your thinking cap on. They can be dark, brown, whatever shade. A black man and a black woman, when they have intercourse, they are more than capable of producing a child with white skin. Now, we know this to be albinoism. So, you can have a black man and you can have a black woman. And they can produce a child with white skin, and blonde or reddish hair. But if Adam and Eve were white, they are incapable of producing any other offspring other than white. So in other words, you can't take a white man and a white woman and get anything other than white. So mission debunked okay again adam and eve they could not have been white they had to have been black because the scripture said that god created them from dust dust is a a grayish a grayish color okay it gives off a grayish tint so you cannot get 
any pigmentation out of whites. You can only get white out of white. Okay, so that's my second demonstration for today. I hope I made sense out of that. Now, what color is the ground? What color is dirt? Okay, we know that either the ground is either um, some dirt may be black, some dirt may be brown, some dirt may be um, red, like a reddish brown, like a red clay. Okay, so we know that, um, we know that, okay? you. In other words, dirt ain't never been this color, okay? This image, I'm going somewhere with this image. That's why I keep showing it, because I'm debunking the lies, okay? Because they use this image to suppress the truth, okay? And they use this image to oppress us, okay? This image is false. I've just proven it. The Bible have just proven that. So, when I looked up the name of Adam, okay? Adam is a Hebrew name, okay? Adam is a well-known Hebrew name, and Adam means son of of the red earth now remember i just said that dirt can be like a reddish brownish clay you know you heard a red clay but it's not like a red like a like a you know like a a, a white person when they blush they turn red no it would be like a earthy you know like earth tone red okay like a reddish clay type of color so adam in hebrew means son of the red earth so if, if Adam and Eve was created from the earth, I just said the earth ain't never been this color. So if the name Adam in Hebrew means son of the red earth and they were created from the earth, we know that the earth has never been this color. When I say earth, I mean the ground, the dust or the dirt. It said in Genesis um two and seven that God created them from the dust. Dust ain't never been white. So if that be the case, if Adam and Eve was made in the likeness of God, which in Genesis 1 and 26, it said, Then God said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. I already gave you the description of, of God and his image. And Adam and Eve was made in his image. This man don't have woolly hair or feel burnished bronze. This man, he <laughs> he's just an imposter. That's what he is. Okay, that's what he is. So, Adam. Adam literally means red. And there is an et etymological connection between Adam and Adama, which is Adam. A D A M A H Adama designating red clay or red ground. So remember, I just told you about the, the red clay. Dirt, the earth can be um have an appearance of red, red clay. Okay, so that's what Adam means in Hebrew. It means red. Um, all Hebrew um names have a meaning, like like Adam, it has a meaning, which means son of the red earth. Eve, it has a meaning. And I'm going to tell you what hers means. So I wrote this conclusion last night, so I would not forget. So in conclusion, if man was made in the image of God, and God's image is of hair that was white as wool, eyes of flame and fire, and feet of burnished brass, how is the image of... Jesus, okay, a man with white skin, blonde hair, and blue eyes, okay? So that is debunked. So the second conclusion, if Adam and Eve were white, how did the dust of the ground produce white skin? Well, I already proved that to you that a white person and a white person can only produce white. The dust in the ground ain't never been 
white. So, white supremacy. Let's talk about it. The image, okay? The image. Now, for those of you who don't know, I love to watch historical movies like um, anything to do with slavery, any type of historical movie. I love to watch biblical movies, you know, but because I have an old soul. But here's why I stopped watching biblical movies, because it really just burns me up when I see the portrayals of the characters and the portrayals are not true. OK, they're bald faced lies. They depict the people of the Bible as white people. And that's not true. OK, it's not true. And that's why I stopped watching biblical movies, because every time I see it, it really makes me mad. In fact, every time that I see this image, it, it, it makes me mad because I know um, this is why we have white supremacy because of this image okay but i'm going somewhere with this image so the depictions of jesus is always a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes typically typically because now they know that we catching on they'll have like this foreign looking man a uh, so-called jew okay with dark hair but he still is not a black man okay but i guess they feel like well we'll give him a man uh, a depiction with 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 tan like a darker tan skin but he still ain't a black man like no no what do the bible say i'm in the bible okay i'm in the bible so the depictions of jesus is always a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes but the description is very inaccurate according to the bible i've already proven that so the portraying of jesus as a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes um gives white people a false sense of inferiority is what it does okay so white supremacy so the movie portrayals of, of a white jesus conditions the minds of people to view jesus as a white man so if you watching a movie and the characters the biblical characters are always white and this is the image that you see every time you see a biblical movie or every time you you see this in the store or every time you um see his picture in the bible this image it conditions your mind it conditions your mind to 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 believe this lie okay condition what is this word condition that i keep bringing up i'm gonna read to you the definition of con of conditioning but i want to talk about imagery so when you envision jesus right you see the image of a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. So conditioning, what is the definition of conditioning? The process of training or accustoming a person or animal to behave in a certain way or to accept a certain circumstance. And so when you see this image, it conditions you okay to accept a certain circumstance or to accept a certain lie because this is a flat out lie now movies condition your mind to see an image of a white messiah that's what it does they they know what they're doing they know the truth but they they lie they suppress the truth to keep us oppressed to keep us inferior when in fact we're not inferior at all okay so the renaissance era was between the 14th and the 17th century now you know we learned about this in school but what i remember mostly about the renaissance period is uh you know art okay art in uh paintings you know the they call it the rebirth okay uh the paintings just paintings art literature all of that is pretty much what i remember but i do know that during the renaissance period is when this image okay came into play because in the four, between the 14th and the 17th century they knew that the messiah was a black man they knew this but they changed his they changed his description or they changed his image to this image during the renaissance period why did they do that to suppress the truth to keep us oppressed okay 
and for for them to be basically white supremacists. So I'm gonna take you to First Maccabees chapter three, verse forty-eight. Now I don't teach from the apocrypha often because it's not widely accepted. Most people don't really know about the the apocrypha, but the apocrypha is a part of the Bible. Okay, so what am I talking about apocryphal? Apocrypha is scripture. It is um, scripture. The Holy Spirit revealed it to me that it is, in fact, a part of the Bible. The apocryphal was a part of the King James 11 version of the Bible. Okay, the 1611 version. The apocryphal was a part of the 16 uh, the 1611 King James version of the Bible. But the Catholic Church removed those books from the Bible. Wonder why did they do that? Now, if you look up the definition of apocrypha, you will see that the definition of apocrypha means secret or hidden books. Is it by coincidence that that, that there were apocrypha means secret books or hidden books? If they were a part of the Bible in 1611, but they were removed and then it, they're called secret or hidden books. Why were they removed? Who told them to remove the books? Did God tell them to remove the books? I don't think so because last time I checked in the Bible, it say you should not add nothing. You so if you shouldn't add nothing, you shouldn't take nothing away either. But He already knew that they was gonna do that. So First Maccabees, this is scripture. First Maccabees chapter three verse forty eight. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their image. Now, didn't I tell you on yesterday that the Bible was prophetic? Didn't I just tell you that God knew what they was going to do? He knew what they was going to do in the Renaissance period, before and during and after the Renaissance. Now, what didn't I just tell you the apocryphal was scriptural? It is scripture, okay? First Maccabees, this is a real book of the Bible. First Maccabees chapter 3 verse 48 was prophetic and this is what it said. It said, and laid open the book of the law. Okay, I don't have my Bible in here with me, but you know what the book of the law is. The book of the law is the Bible. Okay, I'm going somewhere with this. Wherein the heathen, okay, has sought to paint the likeness of of their image okay new international version Isaiah 53 2 through 3 I keep showing this image because I'm going somewhere with this I'm going somewhere else with this I'm gonna make another point for you when I teach I try to bring as much evidence as possible that is pretty much undeniable that nobody can't argue with me even if they wanted to okay but I'm not gonna argue with nobody I'm gonna let the scripture speak for itself now that's why the Bible says study to show yourself approved to God. And that's what I do. I'm going to show myself approved to God. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to study because I'm tired of all these lies. I'm tired of the truth being suppressed. And I'm going to make it my business to uncover the truth and to tell the truth and shame the devil. You feel me? So the new international version of Isaiah 53 uh, verse 2 through 3 says... Because I'm about to give you another reason why this image is a lie, okay? So if you can, follow along Isaiah 53, verses 2 through 3. He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised, okay, and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hid their faces. He was despised and we held him in low self-esteem. Now, they're talking about the Messiah, they're talking about the Messiah in Isaiah. And the reason that I know that is because Isaiah 53 verses 2 through 
verses two through three, it continues after that. And it, it goes on to say he was bruised for our iniquity and our transgressions. I don't know the words verbatim, but it goes on right after this passage, passage to say that. But I didn't feel like writing all of that. But I just wanted you to see that Isaiah 53 verses two through three. Debunks this image. This man right here, this image, he's a fairly handsome man. Okay, white skin, uh, bl bl blondish hair. Okay, on this picture, he got like hazel eyes. Okay, this ain't the image of Isaiah fifty-three verses two through three. It said that he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him this man got beauty and majesty nothing in his appearance that we should desire him this man got something is his in his appearance that people should desire him so somebody lying who lying that's why you got study but see my thing is this people they they skip over verses like this. They they and I don't understand. And that's why the truth always gets lost in the shuffle. It's like people just skip over uh scripture. Like Revelation um Revelation 1 verses 14 through 15 where it describes the father where it says he has hair of wool, feet of burnished bronze and eyes of blame and fire. It's like we just skip over that. How we let them keep getting away with that? When I was in, uh, I went to West End High School and I remember my art teacher. And thank you, Lord, for bringing this back to my remembrance because I did want to share this. When I, when I went to West End, I remember being in art class and we had this white teacher. And I remember this girl. I don't remember who she was, but somehow they was having a com her and the, the art teacher was having a conversation about the Bible. And I remember that the young lady said that you know uh, Jesus was a black man because she she shared that scripture in Revelation. Um, what was it again? Revelation verse uh, chapter one verses fourteen through fifteen, where it talks about God having hair white as wool, eyes of blaming of flame and fire and feet of burnished of burnished brass some translations say burnished bronze either way there's not white skin and i remember the um art teacher getting so upset she got so mad because she was like no jesus was white says who says who no he was not not according to the bible no he was not that's a lie. No, he wasn't. But that's that false of of that's that false sense of white supremacy, that false sense of inferiority that I was talking about. When you this goes back to the conditioning that I was talking about. So when you see this image, it conditions your mind for you to think about him when you envision your savior. But this is blasphemous. Actually, this picture is blasphemous. It is. It really is. Because it's a lie. That's not even what, what the Messiah or the Father looks like. So the depiction of Jesus, this Jesus, is a handsome white man. Okay? So somebody lying. That's debunked. So let's go back to this word conditioning that I was talking about. When I looked up the synonyms of white, this is what comes to, I'm, I'm, I'm going back to conditioning. When I look up the, syn the synonyms of white, you get pure innocent free from evil intent relatively harmless morally or spiritually pure now when you look up the synonyms of black you get fear power mystery strength authority rebellion and seriousness even in the definitions they've been conditioning us when you look up the definition of white when you see this image this conditions you. This is the image that you see when you think about white. You think about something that's holy, something that's pure. Okay? You think about this man. Well, for the ones who don't know the truth, that's what they envision or that's what they think about. Um, so, I got another uh, demonstration. 
I want to go back to conditioning. I was watching somebody on YouTube and they said that uh, they brought this to my attention. And I was like, wow, this is so true. This is so profound. And I forgot who I was watching because I watch uh, different people. But I said that I wanted to share this uh, with you guys one day. And I bought these this morning um, for the purpose of this video because I wanted to make sure that it was interesting and I wanted, you know, people to be engaged. And I really just wanted to, to have imagery and props and, and really provoke your thought um, during these 28 days. And so I really wanted to share this. And if, and if I remember who the person was I was watching, I would get them credit, but I don't remember who it was. But um, I'm not going to take credit for this, but I do want to share it. I just want you to be aware of the conditioning. Um, I talked about the conditioning with the images, you know, the picture of that man in the Bible on the coffee table, the picture of, of that man on that candle right there, the picture of that man in the movies, or that's conditioning, okay, that is conditioning, and I gave you the definition of conditioning, but look at this, okay, what do you see on this cake box? You see a piece of black cake, right, a piece of chocolate cake. Now, I know the screen is, is backwards to you, but you see that right there? What'd they say? They say devil's food, right? Devil's food. So you being conditioned that when you see black, so when you when you go for my bakers or whoever, your grandma or whoever, and you go in the grocery store, and you don't see the subconscious mind is so powerful. The subconscious mind is a powerful thing. It's real powerful. It's, it's, it's the most powerful part of your mind that you got. Okay. It holds everything. It's like a memory bank. Okay. It's, 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 it's real powerful. Okay. So when you go in the grocery store and you see this, you see this with your eyes, but you, you see it. But it's not dawning on you that it's a, a dark piece of cake and it's called devil's food. You see, you see it and it's like, hmm, but it don't dawn on you. But in your mind, you see it. So when you think about black people, you will think about them as being inferior to white people. You see what I'm saying? That's conditioning. Why could this black piece of cake not be called angel's food? You see what I'm saying? Do, is y'all following me? I mean, do y'all really see where I'm trying to go with this? Why does it have to be called devil's food? Because it's chocolate. You see what I'm saying? Because it's black. Because it's dark. Now, check this out. This is so powerful. And I wish I could remember who I saw this 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 on. They didn't use demonstrations but I was like, wow, this is powerful. I got to share it. So check this out. The box used to say angel's food. Okay. And if you look up angel food cake, this piece of white cake is going to pop up. Now I tried to find a box when I was in the, in the store this morning that said angel's food. Because it used to say angel's food. For whatever reason, I don't know, they changed it. So it just said white but this box used to say angel's food cake. Why is it that the white piece of cake used to say angel's food, but the black piece of cake say devil's food? That's called conditioning. And that's what they do. They condition us. Even though the Bible clearly states that Jesus and the Father are men of color, they promote this image in all the movies, in all the shows, everywhere. And it's a lie because it contradicts the Bible. It's called conditioning. That's what they do. We've been conditioned for 400 plus years. But like I said, in the last days, there will be an increase in knowledge. And people are waking up. And that's why I wanted to be obedient and, and do this to the best of my ability because I want people to wake up and see what time it is, okay? So, another thing about conditioning, I'm still on conditioning. Just think about it. When you think about a funeral, what what color comes to your mind? 
black, right? I got on the right color today, black. When you think about a funeral, you think about black. You think about grief, you think about mourning. What colors do people typically wear or used to wear in the old days? Because, you know, they're doing this new school thing now where they have uh, themed colors at the funeral. But I'm 34 now. And y'all, people my age, you know what I'm talking about. Back in the in the day, um, they you, you typically, typically wore black to funerals. Why black? Why now white? You see what I'm saying? You see the conditioning when you think about mourning and death you see what i'm saying that conditioning you think about black you think about grief you think about mourning you you think about oppression you think about depression you see what i'm saying that's that's conditioning why not why not white who who said that black had to be a mourning you see what i'm saying you see how they condition us to oppress us so when you think about black, you think about a funeral, you think about mourning, you think about grief. But when you think about the image of God, you think about something pure and holy. This is the image that comes to your mind. You think about white, pure, holy. Sis said you knew <laughs> you knew you was about to pull out that angel food. <laughs> Girl, the Lord reminded me last night to to, to do some demonstrations. So, when you think about a baptism, when you think about a wedding, what do you think about? What color do you think about? You think about white, right? White, pure, a baptism, a wedding, those colors, the, the uh, dress of a bride. Back in the old days, you know, the bride was a virgin, okay? You, so, she would have on a white dress, which is what the white dress was supposed to signify her purity, Okay, her, that she was a virgin, so she would have on a white dress to symbolize their purity. And so, when you look at this image, you think about holiness, you think about white, you think about purity, a wedding, a baptism, you think about a new birth, white purity. So, Song of Solomon, which is in the Bible, okay. The Book of Solomon, Song of Solomon. This I just want to share this scripture because they like to portray that all the characters from the Bible were white people, which is very inaccurate. So, Song of Solomon, chapter one, verse six says, "Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun have looked upon me." So, how is it that in all the biblical movies? All of the pictures always look like people with this color skin, with white or tan or, or olive color skin. How is that? Solomon said, chapter 1, verse 6, Look not upon me because I am black, because the sun has looked upon me. So again, somebody lying. Lamentations, chapter 5, verse 10. These are the type of scriptures that the preachers and the pastors skip over and not just be so bewildered. Why? Teach this truth. Teach this truth. This is our heritage. Don't suppress it. Don't skip over it. Teach it. It's the truth. The truth shall set you free. Matter of fact, that's what the Bible says. He said, know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And now that I know the truth, I'm more free now than I've ever have been. Lamentations, chapter 5, verse 10. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. So why again, once again, why are all the depictions in the movies and books? Look like this man right here. Somebody lying. Do it look like this man's skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine? Lamentations. I'm not making this up, people. Lamentations in the Bible, 5 verse 10. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. But you got to study. You got to study to show yourself approved. I'm almost done. Melanin. 
Melanin popping. That's what they talk about these days. Melanin. What is the definition of melanin? A dark brown to black pigment occurring in the hair, skin, and iris of the eye in people and animals. It is responsible for tanning of skin exposed to sunlight. Although melanin is visually, I'm sorry, is usually discussed as a single pigment, there are two types of melanin that contribute to pigmentation in the hair, skin, and eyes of humans and animals. Eumelanin, this pigment is associated with dark tones such as brown and black. Human skin comes in a wide variety of colors ranging from shades of dark brown to almost white. Levels of melanin are primarily determined by genetics. Individuals born to fair-skinned parents will inherit their parents' fair skin as individuals is born to dark-skinned parents will inherit dark skin. Now, when I was in school, I used to love biology. I love science. I love English, history, pretty much every subject except math. I remember, I've been out of school a long time, but I remember when we talked about dominant and recessive genes. Now, some of you been out of school longer than me or about the same time as me. But I remember dominant genes were stronger and recessive genes were weaker. Dominant genes express themselves more strongly than recessive genes. The dominant gene is represented by a capital letter. The recessive gene is represented by a lowercase letter. I remember that. Dominant. What's the definition of dominant? Most important, powerful, or, influ or influential. Now hold this thought because I'm going somewhere with this before I get ready to close. Recessive genes are masked by the effects of the dominant gene. What are dominant genes? Dark hair is dominant over blonde or red hair. Curly hair, I want you to picture the image of, 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 of the father in the Bible, okay? Because I'm going somewhere with this. I hope y'all reading between the lines. Curly hair is dominant over straight hair. Brown eyes are dominant over over blue and green eyes so we can conclude okay that dark skin is dominant over white or light skin refer back to the image of the father in revelation that he gave us everything that he described the father to be in revelation 1 verses 14 through 15 it said that he had eyes of flame and fire. That's a dominant trait, according to biology. It said that his hair was white as wool. So I'm going to say that's a metaphor. So in conclusion, we can pretty much gather that he didn't have straight hair. Because if the if he had straight hair, it would have said, it would have gave us a, a description that he had straight blonde hair. But no, it didn't say it. It said that his hair was white as wool. So we can conclude that he probably had woolly hair. So it would be safe to say that he had woolly hair. And what did I say? Curly hair was a dominant gene. Also, it said that he had feet that looked like they had been burned in a furnace. So it's pretty much safe to say we can conclude that he had dark skin which would be another dominant trait, okay? The Bible proves Jesus had melanated skin. It proves that. I've proved that if you've been watching this video. Special skin cells called mel melanocytes make melanin. Everyone has the same number of melano melanocytes, but some people make more melanin than others. If those cells make just a little bit a little bit of melanin, your hair, skin, and the iris of your eyes can be very light. 
If your cells make more melanin, then your hair, skin, and eyes will be darker. So this man obviously has a lack of melanin. So how is it that he is superior or they make him portray him to be superior than us? He's not. The amount of melanin your body makes depends on your genes. If your parents have a lot of have a lot or a little skin pigment, you'll probably look like them. So I pray that um this message has you know has provoked your thought and has intrigued you. You know, I tried to make it very informative and creative as possible. If you came in late, please go back and watch the replay. I just pray that it's been a blessing um to you because I really want to be obedient and, and do this 28 day series of the real black history so today was the first day i pray you know that you all got something out of this as i did my best to try to preach the gospel and make it interesting make it informative and accurate as possible again i'm not racist i'm just pro-truth and provoking thought and in honor of black history month this is something that god placed on my heart to just awaken his people and let you know that you know we are of hebrew descent we are not african we do have a history we do have an identity and uh the father and the son do not look like this imposter right here okay this just is a flat out lie okay this is white suppression to keep us oppressed and, and, and mission is debunked. And I, and I know that I have debunked, uh, that image in this, um, day one of this video. So, uh, guys will and see you tomorrow, probably about the same time at 10 AM as I will do the second day, which will be day two of the 28 day series of the real black history okay so i pray that this message has blessed you on today and i don't take it lightly i'm, I'm thankful and I'm, I'm glad for you uh guys who have tuned in who have tuned in and i'm also grateful for you guys who will go back and watch the replay so you guys have a blessed day bye